This is our uh, San Diego Comic Con wrap up of some of the comics news that has occurred over the weekend. Yes, we are yes. here live Weird. from Seattle, but hey, the internet has helped us learn a lot about what's going on. Two thousand miles away from the largest comic book convention ever. <laughs> this so, year, yeah, this year. Go uh, ahead. Sorry. So I guess let's start with one of the bigger pieces of news. I think from at least for a podcast perspective, because of what mm -hmm. we read is that DC is taking over the editorial auspices of all of the Vertigo characters that are originally from DC. Right. So this is primarily Swamp Thing, which okay. we already covered in depth. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Kevin and Greg went off for a while on that one. Did they? Um, <laughs> that Madame Xanadu, the, mini -ser or the, mm -hmm. the series, is canceled, so presumably she will be even more available now to be used, however. Constantine might go back and forth. He's definitely keeping... In his his own series in right. Vertigo, but then he has what's the other what's the other title we're talking about here? Then? Well, no, nobody knows. That's he, the thing. It, it's it's that any of the DC proper universe writers could use him in a story if they feel like doing just so. Just bring him in randomly as right. a character because now, now they um, have control of those characters again. Right. One piece of information they were trying to hype, but I don't really buy it, is the whole Constantine marriage idea that he's going to get married. It's possible it happens. I just don't see it as a long-term thing. I think it's just it's it's what Peter Milligan is trying to do with the character. He just took it over the series a few months ago. He's been building up to this whole thing of the relationship between Constantine and Epiphany. Mm -hmm. um, Epiphany, he breaks down. They uh, he finally decides to pop the question. <laughs> God, man. <Sorry>. Uh, <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> True. Stop wrestling uh, it. Well, if we had some nice things, we could wrap them. This is true. But not if you pop it all. Uh, Don't judge me. So, one thing that. that uh, one interesting thing that Dark Horse tried to do is have a not at Comic Con party. Right. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Where they would have. They, at select stores around the country, they would have. At, starting at noon, the stores would open, have special things. All Dark Horse titles were X amount off whatever the store wanted to. I'm, I'm sure there was a baseline that Dark Horse asked them to, but there was a deal on that. There were a bunch of freebies uh, at the Comics Dungeon here in Seattle. They were one of the designated party spots. There were uh, two different types of cookies, and just randomly the Red Bull reps had stopped by and gave them a cooler <laughs> full of Red Bull to give away. All right, see, because Comics, yeah. Red Bull, that makes sense. Exactly. Uh, well, and so the special announcements really didn't seem that special. Apparently there were people lined up in advance outside the store, where the manager told me, well, but I don't think anybody seemed enthused about... They had said, they had released, uh, DC uh, had, had released uh, uh, several days in advance of this event, this not a Comic-Con event, that, that there were gonna there were gonna be some very special and important news that they were going to release to the not a Comic-Con parties before they started talking about it at Comic-Con, and I think that's what a lot of people were interested in, in going to the event. Did you, did you not... Feel the electricity in the air because you, you went to the Comic Con. Yeah, Thursday, right? I got there a little late, probably one one thirty, and it was supposed to be like the big announcement was going to be early enough, mm -hmm. and there were there were people stopping in, but like the people who had come early in time for the event had already left. Yeah. Like, apparently, it was not big enough to get people really enthused. Mm -hmm. I think it was a lot of stuff about you know stories that are ongoing or characters that will be in that were being introduced, but I just I I, I think whatever they had to announce was not quite enough to really do anything for people. To hold up its own event, okay. Um, which is fine. I mean, that's yeah, it, it was do. something they tried, and I, it'll be interesting to find out, you know, in the weeks ahead, what, you know, how much extra money Dark Horse might have made just off sales mm -hmm. of reduced price titles, whether it was the trades or the single issues. Were people showing up, and were people actually buying Dark Horse stuff, or just buying whatever was on the shelf anyway, the that shopping. they wanted to buy? They would have been shopping for it anyway. Um, right. Big news for me, and I know that no one else in the entire podcast uh, family cares about this title, but Crossed, yes. uh, two new two new series announced, and, oh. and one with the original author and artists uh, uh, back on board for, and uh, the um, and I'm going to get it wrong again because I, I I'm stupid. Ellis Ennis. Ellis. Ennis. Or no, Ennis is doing Garth this. Ennis. 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 I, I just I know I'm 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 a bad nerd. Deal with it. Um, Jason Burroughs? Jason Burroughs, uh, 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 doing the artwork. He also did some great stuff on Neonomicon, but I'll talk about that the next time I do a real number ones. Stay tuned. Uh, but uh, back on board, and uh, he had uh, had plenty of great things to say about what the other uh, the other uh, authors and artists were doing with his universe that he established, and uh, just high praise for Cross Family Values, 
and uh, I forget the exact title on the new series that's coming, but um, I am just over the moon. This is Avatar's biggest uh, biggest title, easily their biggest title, selling outselling everything else they have right now. But uh, Avatar, um, you know, they they've put out a lot of grittier, kind of more kind of edgy, in your face. You know, we're not afraid to to really, you know, just uh, make our uh, make the artwork just kind of pop and. Uh, I would actually say that's my problem with Avatar right now. Really? Um, because I read a lot of the Ellis titles that come through, mm -hmm. and a lot of the art is starting to look exactly the same regardless of what title I'm reading. I will say that. Um, and I think it's because it's a creator-owned imprint mm -hmm. where the, they get to do what they want, and they probably have a couple <coughs> of house artists, but some of that stuff is starting to wear on me, where I want yeah. a li slightly different art style for some of the titles, especially if I'm reading Gravel and then move over to Black Summer or to some of the others. I mean, it's just... Well, Black Summer wrapped, but I mean... It's, uh, as you'll say, you're not going to be yeah. much more of that. Um, okay, well, so what else? Uh, we'll we'll uh, get wrapped up, okay. and we'll talk about Crossed all day. So here's an really interesting well. little thing. Mm -hmm. In the days leading up to Comic-Con, there was a little public sniping between DC and Alan Moore. Yeah. Alan Moore's known for sniping at DC anyway, but they provoked him. They were standing on, like, opposite uh, sides of the fence and just, just going... <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> uh, in that, uh, they... Sure. Yep. Um... <laughs> Basically, it came out that DC had offered more a fair amount of money and the rights to Watchmen as long as he would yes. write spin-offs of Watchmen. Or, you know, whether it's a prequel or a later or something, yeah. um, or, you know, something, something related, like with one of the characters. And, and gosh, Jason, how did he feel about that idea? Uh, he was less than enthused. Ah, yes, I think less than enthused. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. he basically told them to shove it. Actually, that was a big F He did actually yeah. legitimately say if they'd done this when the story originally came out mm -hmm. and offered him a little more creative flexibility, he might have signed on then. He can say this now. Who knows what might have happened at the time, but he had no interest. So during Comic Con, what do we get? Top Shelf gets to have, also have a nice little F you at the industry and uh, say a little bit. <laughs> League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Volume 3. Moore and O'Neill together again uh, with Century, which will be set, I believe, in the swinging 70s of London, uh, 1970s this time. Uh, but they, their creative relationship with Helen Moore seems to be doing okay yeah. because he's still writing and still happy with that. Those of us at Top Cow would like to say, we love you, Helen Moore. Top Cow. Right. What did I say? Top Cow. God bless it. Um, I also think that's interesting because, the, uh, because of the fact that the movie was so poorly handled... Um, but he's still writing and still appreciates those characters, so I like that he's still able to do that. Uh, the other news I really wanted to get out was mm -hmm. there'd been a, a little bit of an online and in-print campaign of Stan Lee is back. Stan the Man is back. They finally Where released... Where did he go? Well, doing more. Uh, and so what was released at Comic-Con is uh, he completely designed three new characters for Boom Studios. He's not working on Marvel DC. This is Boom Studios. I was trying to act surprised. Yes, I yes you did. Uh, Paul Cornell mm -hmm. from Doctor Who and Action Comics will be writing a character called Soldier Zero, a wheelchair-bound astronomy teacher who is bonded with an alien uh, weapon of war. Oh, uh, fancy. Mark Wade, the man who runs Boom Studios there it is. and writes, writes a couple of those great titles, uh, will be writing The Traveler, a time-traveling superhero who battles a bunch of high-tech assassins from the future. And then one that sounds really fun, Chris Roberson, who wrote the uh, Cinderella mini for Vertigo, based off Fables, and then currently writing iZombie, which is a great little zombie I tale. iZombie. Uh, he gets to write Starborn, which is a regular guy, schlub, who, turns out, he's the heir to an intergalactic empire. Like King Ralph. Yes, exactly <laughs> like King Ralph. Uh, and has to deal with all of that stuff. And they've got some great art, right, uh, artists, Javier Pina, Chad Harden, Kerry Randolph. So I think that's a great thing for uh, Stanley and great for Boom Studios. Oh, totally. Uh, so I think that's a great, that's a little bit of what happened at the comics news. Uh, you can't cover all of it in ten minutes. Probably couldn't cover it half hour, but hey. Well, you, you couldn't. Yeah, like the pop man could do it. <laughs> Look all over right, there. Uh, thanks a lot for watching.